and we can start i think so <clears throat> the topic i would like to bring up today is related uh, somewhat to automated uh, tests and as long as we are a ruby community we will talk about uh, automated tests in a rails a project and i will go into more detail as we uh, go on uh a funny picture so everything a passes this two shall pass uh, was a, a proverb written on a king's Solomon ring and uh, I think every engineer uh, that worked uh, with automated tests uh, eventually had this idea in his mind that so, uh, sooner or, or later the, the tests will pass okay so this is the agenda for uh, today's a discussion and uh, eventually let's uh, start before we uh, get into more uh, details a uh, small introduction and a uh, little bit more context I am pretty sure that uh, all of you are familiar with this so we're uh, talking about uh, the types of tests uh, uh, so for uh, almost all objects and classes uh, inside our a project uh, rails a project we would like to have a uh, almost 100 percent coverage with unit tests because they are uh, a great tool uh, they are quick they are most of the times easy to implement there are Mm, a lot of ready-made solutions for rails normally this is r spec or if you would like you could choose a, a mini test or maybe some other more uh, rare solution but anyways uh, unit tests are not only quick they are they can be useful uh uh, in a way that uh, uh, you could use them to identify code smells like a small example uh, so once you find yourself having hard times implementing a, a unit test for an object that most likely uh, indicates there is a code smell in your uh, a project and you should uh rather sooner than later uh take some measures to improve uh the second part of the a pyramid uh, contains uh service tests they uh intended to check the integrations so uh, on the contrary of unit tests that uh, do the checks uh, independently and in isolation uh, service tests uh, required to perform some checks on the cooperation of objects or components or packages or modules inside your project they uh, most likely will not have 100% coverage in your system uh, they might be a little bit more expensive to implement given that uh, certain components can be implemented on uh, remote uh, servers and the network interactions are pretty expensive and take might take a significant amount of time and uh, on the top of the a pyramid we have ui tests also called acceptance tests these are uh, the slowest ones uh, they uh, normally are run inside a a browser using such tools as a chrome a driver and uh, some sort of a automation framework like uh, capybara 
it may be used with combination of uh, uh, cucumber. Uh, these tests, like I said, pretty slow. They uh, take significant amount of time. So engineers should be mindful about choosing uh, the really uh, a critical uh, flows in the system to be uh, to be covered. So I think we can move on. And uh, uh, to make uh, the presentation a little bit more vivid, I picked a uh, nicknames for the project we will be considering today. So there, there will be two of them. The first one uh, is a so-called boring a project uh, that's uh, basically uh, most likely would be a project which doesn't last for too long. That may be some sort of a, st a startup uh, with not with a uh, code base of a, a moderate size, not very big, which basically means the a code coverage uh, must be close to 100% uh, for the unit uh, tests and uh, a critical flows uh, are also covered with integration and acceptance tests. Uh, in a boring a project, uh, the entire test suite can be run locally after every single change the development team introduces uh, that uh, is a great thing it uh, gives a decent level of control and confidence over the changes it uh, simplifies to a certain extent the deployment process and uh, uh, yeah, the life is great and everything works. The second a project I would like to discuss is a so-called funny a project because uh, it's uh, some sort of a very huge enterprise a project that lasted at least uh, ten years. It has a huge code base, which definitely means the test suite is also very big and complex in such a sort of a projects uh one can find it really hard uh or even close to impossible to run the entire test suite after every change uh was introduced in the code so uh if uh, the time that is required for uh, the entire test suite to, to be run locally is more than a couple of hours. It can be even more like five or six or more hours. Then uh, surely uh, it is not an option to apply such test suite and run it uh, locally after every change. What that means? Uh, most likely, the development teams will uh, uh, rely on uh, some sort of a CI server to uh, run the tests and uh, get back to the CI server dashboard a little bit later to check the results. And uh, this uh, introduce uh, uh, like the a delay and uh, it's easy to f forget like in the end of the day that you just need to go to the CI server and check what the the results are uh, if anything is broken or is just fine and uh, <clears throat> after a certain period amount of time uh most likely 
the flaky tests and even uh, failing tests will creep into the test suite and uh, over more and more time it it will become harder and harder to track all those fa failures and uh, the rest so the problem that uh, i am going to try to find the solution for uh, today is what a development team uh, might do what options they have if if it's not possible to run the entire test suite and uh, what steps could be made in order to gain back uh, control and confidence over the changes okay so the zero step uh i think i should bring up is if the test suite takes very long time uh probably a good idea would be to factor out the uh creation of test data uh the benefit that this would give is that since that would be a separate a process it should be run just once and not in uh, every single uh test that you run so that uh uh in in some way uh, breaks the best practice pattern for the unit tests which actually dictates us that every good uh, unit test should follow these four steps these are the setup when actually this is the the part that we are taking out from here then execution then we do the checks and then we're tearing down the in environment and uh, bring it to the initial state. So, but the virtue it uh, provides us is that we uh, can uh, save a significant amount of time over here. And uh, I think this is the trade off that we should be mindful about. And uh, consider okay let's move on so the step number one uh i am going to discuss is that there is a ready-made solution for rails uh, this is a guard gem and uh, it uh, works uh very in 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 a very simple way it just uh, once you run it in your console and uh, do the uh code implementation as a uh, normally it just uh, identifies the necessary uh unit tests and run them uh and immediately presents you the results so I would like to make a small demo over here. Alona, can you see my screen right now? Yes, but uh, it's just uh, it's just a part of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Could you please reshare maybe? Yeah, just a second.
now? Yeah, it's okay yes. for now. Okay, great. So, uh, fortunately for me, I have a guard gem already set up in my environment. So, uh, I'm running it in the console and uh, uh, I'm not sure how to share uh, two windows at a time. So I'm just uh, doing some change in the code. Unfortunately, you're not able to see it. But uh, I made a change uh, in a class that resides in my project. And uh, the, the tests are just run by the guard game. Okay, I just put the a debugger. I'm just resuming it. Just reverting the change. Okay, uh, that's uh, basically it. Uh, the usage uh, of the guard game is extremely simple. Uh, the uh, setting it up might uh, bring some uh, obstacles, but uh, <clears throat> the gen has a really uh, great documentation which uh, outlines uh, every single aspect of uh, the settings so uh, and the community is uh, also very uh, vivid so uh, most likely you will be able to find out the proper uh, implementation for the setup uh, of your uh, project so I'm just getting back to the presentation. One second, please. So once we have that uh, in place, that uh, gem really does a great job uh, in identifying the necessary unit tests and run running them immediately which uh, to a certain degree brings us back the control and confidence over the code the changes that you implement and it can be run uh, multiple times uh, just uh, normally uh, the default settings dictate that uh, once you uh, save the file in your editor then the guard gem just triggers the test for you okay let's move on to, to the next step then aha uh -huh, the demo we did it okay so the second step would be uh a pretty similar solution that is also uh, provided by the guard gem as a plugin. So in a big enterprise a project, uh, most likely you would find that you use some sort of a uh, uh, frameworks like uh, Capybara and RSpec or Cucumber and uh, Apibara to do the acceptance testing for you. Uh, 
and uh, also uh, GuardGem has the ready-made solution for this. Uh, and if you find that you uh, moving into the right direction with the guard game, if it improves your uh, development flow, then uh, you must uh, you should also consider uh, setting up the uh, s solution for the acceptance test. It uh, works in a similar way. Uh, it uh, just identifies the acceptance test after the change you made and run them for you. And the next step, which I consider to be optional. Uh, so in a big enterprise projects, uh, it's uh, pretty common that uh, there is some sort of a uh, front end array work uh, used like Angular or Vue or uh, React JS. Uh, all of them uh, once used are a uh, once used by a, a development team uh, produce uh, uh, isolated uh, components which can be then uh, easily unit attested also. So the next uh, solution uh, I would like to tell a couple of words about is related to the JavaScript unit tests, given that you use one of the above mentioned frameworks. Uh, so the idea behind this is uh, very si similar to the uh, guard gem uh, so once you uh, use the just a package for your test uh, for your unit tests you should do some uh, minor tweaks using the change since option which would uh, produce the very same effect for the javascript unit tests And uh, really briefly, a couple of words regarding the alternatives. Uh, the most close alternative to a guard gem would be the watcher uh, framework. Uh, it's pretty new uh, in uh, relation to guard gem, but it's also uh, very vivid and uh, develops uh pretty fast so if you would like to look for some other options you could try that one as well so uh the conclusion is that uh once you use the combination some sort of a combination of the uh, steps that i tried to bring up uh that would be the ci server the guard gem the solution for um, automated acceptance tests and optionally a solution for your unit tests then uh having all those steps implemented and in place uh you would significantly improve the level of control and confidence uh during the implementation of the changes to your code base so that's basically it and this is all i have uh thank you for your attention i'm happy to answer any questions thank you Ilya. can i please ask a first question just for clarification uh you mentioned uh, about the um 
solution step number one, if not mistaken. And uh, the question is, am I understand right that um, guard uh, triggers um, spec run just by saving uh, the file, right? What exactly. Is Okay, uh, so the question is, um, what if I have, for example, uh, the setting in my uh, IDEA, uh, for example, just to automatically save file after three seconds, for example. Am I understand yeah. right that in this case, uh, it's more preferable to use um, Git hooks, for example, just in case if I uh, need to check all the specs before committing my changes? or if there are another workarounds? Uh, I think uh, there is an option for this. Uh, so far, I was uh, pretty happy with uh, this uh, uh, solution, but I am pretty confident that uh, there is a really vast m uh, amount of options and ways one could configure uh, this gem uh uh frankly saying i i didn't have yet experience with this but this is a great point and uh something uh at least for me to think about and maybe uh find uh how that that uh, can be uh adjusted and set up in that case okay thank you Ilya. sure Maybe other questions? Yeah, yeah, I want to clarify the moment. Like, uh, we need the guard game for just for run testing automatically or for something else? I don't really get it. Uh, the specific flow that uh... I am using it. Uh, this is uh, primarily for uh, automated uh, unit test. Yes, that's correct. As far as I uh, understood the question, uh, the guard gem is like a universal tool that allows us to uh, set up any commands and any triggers. So I guess it's not the one possible way to just uh, run the specs. You can uh, run every command you wish, for example. Yeah, absolutely, so that it is, is correct. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a pretty a big uh, framework, I would say, and uh, it is not limited to uh, specifically this usage. Uh, like I said, uh, this was a sort of uh, great tool for me, sp specifically in this direction. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to get into more details regarding the other potential uh, great flows that it might offer so far. So it is some kind of aliases in uh, Bash, right? Like it uh, will uh, n not only like alias, uh, the guard will uh, run some commands uh, according to triggers, or uh, the guard will run some process like, like algorithm of process step by step uh, when you run some guard command. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, specifically to identification of the uh, unit tests uh, in the uh, configuration for the guard gem, you just uh, specify the paths and some sort of events that are uh, triggered and uh, the guard gem just uh, stores for the paths you mentioned in the configuration and checks uh, for the necessary files and then actually run them. Once again, this yeah, is, this is mm -hmm. regarding for the usage of automated uh, testing. Yeah, okay, thanks a lot. 
Sure. Uh, I have one more question. Uh, maybe it's related to anyone who is present on this uh, presentation. Maybe someone else can also share another cases uh, for the guard gem. Maybe uh, somebody used it uh, not only for the test suits, but on for something else. I guess it's mainly for automated testing. Yeah, there was like, um, I don't know, like guys, it, it was like a few, few years, maybe more so. I don't remember the details, but it was something like um, we used guard gem to uh, like to improve performance of application. Yeah, because uh, uh, some it was a big application and sometimes it uh, took some time to, to reload. Yeah, all the application. So we defined some rules and it was just to not stop and start server again. We just use this guard. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not remember details. Yeah, but there was like example of another usage of guard. Yeah, thank you, Sergey. I think it could be something like a local CI after some changes, uh, as Elia mentioned, like after saving changes, you can run not only the specs, you can run Rubocop or something like that, that some linters and uh, etc. Yeah, I guess it's one of the case for the usage here. Yeah. You can just trigger chicken uh, spec tests uh, uh, related to your uh, code files yeah, instead of running it manually. Yeah. But I guess it can be used in uh, in many ways, not just for running inspectors, yeah. Cool, thanks. Uh, thanks for the uh, info. I will definitely check this out uh, because uh, uh, there are uh, surely uh, some more things that we could use that and uh, in a huge uh, a project, there is also always a need to automate some things. And uh, I think that uh, running some sort of linters uh, in a separate a process by guard, also like Rubocop or maybe uh, some sort of a breakman checks that would be actually great, <clears throat> wouldn't hurt at least. Surely. Maybe, any yeah, mm -hmm. any, any questions regarding presentation? No one. By the way, uh, I looked uh, to the title of the presentation and uh, there was um, events even though it's not possible, uh, I just uh, misunderstand of what can be not possible to run tests for it's just title. Yeah, uh, so the idea that it is not possible the entire test suite, like with a simple command like uh, bundle exec r spec and just the entire path because it uh, might take, let's say, a couple of days for all the uh, unit tests to be completed on the development of a machine. Obviously, you can one cannot uh, use that as an option when you do, for example, like a, mm, some complex change. Uh, that you have been working for during the entire day and you would like to uh, run as, ma as many tests as possible to make sure that you didn't break anything anywhere and uh, you just cannot run uh, all tests all together because of the amount of time it takes. So you have to rely on a CI server, which to some sort, uh, uh, 
does the job, but not ideally, because you will have to get back to it over a certain period of time, most likely during the time you would be occupied with some other task. And so asynchronous uh, type of that checks that doesn't like improve and doesn't solve the problem 100 a percent. So basically it is uh, in a project that I am currently uh, involved uh, uh, the tests uh, for, for, for um, one of the uh, applications uh, they took more than two days and they were not completed I just had to turn them off so definitely in such kind of a situation would be cool to have a solution that would do such sort of immediate checks and present the results immediately uh, mm -hmm. so you could uh, make sure that like if it is broken or not if it works and act accordingly by the way, uh, what about running um, too many uh, tests? Uh, the good uh, issue is to use uh, parallel tests because of it runs uh, tests in multiple processes and uh, it's uh, really a quick uh, solution of uh, slow uh, uh, one process running tests. Yeah. Uh... To, to some sort, I think that would work. But uh, you see, uh, the process for uh, the entire test suite to be completed on a CI server, which I think definitely utilizes this approach uh, for, in our project, it, it takes around four hours. I, I don't expect that my development machine is faster than the than the environment that is used in in uh, in a CI like Jenkins or similar. Sorry, Ilya, yeah. you mean uh, four hours of, of the parallel spec test on the CI, right? Yeah, or just, or just uh, all without parallel tests. Four four hours. Uh, it takes four hours to like around four hours uh, for the entire test suite to be completed on the CI server. Mm, okay, got it. By the way, why not think GitHub Actions? Uh, excuse me, could you repeat, please? Uh, I mean, uh, why um, you talked about Jenkins or, for example, so Circle CI? Uh, why not GitHub Actions? It's, uh, as I know, uh, also a good thing. And if uh, code uh, is hosted uh, on the GitHub, um, the good thing is to uh, have another processes where it's code. Like as far as I know, there is a difference in price for the different size. And as far as I know, the GitHub has like high prices. Oh, well, uh, to my point of view, that also might be a factor, but uh, uh, like in a big company, when you have like uh, other, like a couple of hundreds of people that work on the uh, development, uh, this is not always a easy procedure to implement uh, such stuff. It would uh, definitely re require some uh, chain of approvals and then the mm, implementation also. Definitely uh, a great point to consider at least, uh, but uh, in context of like a ready-made solution that can be used right here right now uh guard uh much easier to to use and uh, you see be, because in order to uh be able to introduce the uh github 
uh, for this, uh, it would require some amount of time uh, because uh, not uh, just one team like my team will be using it the entire company uh, will need either to use it or not so this is a uh, pretty big change for the uh, development flow and uh, it will be thoroughly checked and tested before it is approved which like i said most likely we will take some considerable amount of time and we as uh, developers would like to have some maybe trade-off sort of uh, solutions but which could improve our <laughs> make our life easier so yeah i think the guard gem in that context work just works just great I get it. Uh, excuse me. Could you please repeat how it's called the uh, GitHub uh, hooks or some other uh, thing? Actions, actions. Git, GitHub actions. Okay. Thank you. I will check this out. Actions. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. A great point, by the way. Any questions yet? Yeah. 